Ever feel like everything is going wrong and wonder how to stay hopeful? Today, we'll talk about finding peace and hope even when life is hard. We'll see how trusting Jesus can help us stay strong and say, it is well with my soul no matter what happens. Before we start, if you're new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button, give this video a like, and share it with friends and family. We have a meaningful prayer at the end, so watch until the end. Now, let's begin our journey together. It is easy to appreciate God, to thank Him, praise Him, and testify for Him when things are going well in our lives. But what happens when tragedy strikes again and again? How do we react? How do we cope? What is our disposition? when our world is crumbling around us. In those times, we do have hope. When the storms of life hit us hard, Jesus is our hope. He is with us when death is by the door. Because of Jesus, we can truly declare it is well. When we do not know how to keep going or what to do next, we can count on God to be there for us, shielding, strengthening, and comforting us. In his word, we read, God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, and the mountains quake with their surging. Psalm chapter 46, verses 1 to 3. The phrase, it is well with my soul, has a well-known story behind it. Horatio Spafford, a successful businessman in Chicago who experienced unbelievable suffering, wrote this great hymn. In 1871, his son died of scarlet fever. In that same year, the Great Fire of Chicago destroyed most of the real estate that he owned. This alone would be unbearable but life became even more tragic for him just two years later. Spafford decided to take his family on a trip to England in order to meet up with D.L. Moody, the great 19th century evangelist who was preaching there at the time. A delay caused Horatio, however, to send his wife and four daughters ahead on a ship to England. As the ship traveled, disaster struck the ship hit an iron sailing vessel, killing 226 people, including all four of Spafford's daughters. Spafford's wife was unconscious when the ship finally landed in Wales. She sent a simple yet devastating telegram to her husband which said, Saved alone. Spafford hurried to meet with his bereaved wife. It was when they were passing the place where the ship had been hit, that inspiration struck him, leading him to write the amazing words we have in the hymn, It is well with my soul. But it can be easy, given the deep joy expressed in the hymn despite the great tragedy, to misunderstand it and think that the hymn is another example of positive thinking. We live in a world where we constantly focus on the value of optimism. We live in the world of TED Talks and motivational speakers who encourage us that we should look on the bright side of life. And this positive thinking has become very popular in Christian circles. But this is not what it is well means. It goes so much deeper than that. In the Book of Kings, we read of a Shunammite woman and her husband who opened up their home to Elisha, the man of God. Eventually, she prepared a room for him so he could come in and rest. To show his appreciation, Elisha promised her that soon she would hold a much longed for child in her arms, and that's exactly what happened. But the woman conceived and bore a son about that time the following spring, as Elisha had said to her, 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 17. What a testimony of God's goodness in her life. But then one day, 
her son was brought to her ill, and although she gently nursed him, her son died. Who among us wouldn't sympathize with the heartbreak of being given an only child, only for that child to then be tragically taken away? The situation she was in was hopeless, and no number of motivational quotes or speakers would bring back her son. She needed something more, something more grounded and stable to believe in. So, in her hopeless situation, she ran to call Elisha, the man of God. She had hope that her son could be brought back to life. And when she reached Elisha, she was met by his servant Gehazi, and this is what she told him. When the man of God saw her coming, he said to Gehazi, his servant, Look, there is the Shunammite. Run at once to meet her and say to her, Is all well with you? Is all well with your husband? Is all well with the child? And she answered, All is well. 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 25 to 26. Her only son had just died. How could she say things were well? She could say it because she had hope in her heart that God would move in her experiences and make it well. Her faith and hope were rewarded because Elisha came and prayed over her son and he came back to life. She had complete faith in a great God and that is how she was able to declare it is well even in the most distressing of life's experiences. We all have experiences of sadness, worry, or hopelessness in our lives, but we must not abandon our faith in God. You must not give up because in Christ, it is well for you, whatever the circumstance. He died for you. He sympathizes with your pain. He stays with you, and he promises to deliver you to himself. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, no matter how hopeless our situation is, you are with us. It really is well with us because you are helping us. With all that is going on around us, sometimes it can be overwhelming. So we ask for your peace in the midst of the raging storm. In your word, you promise us peace. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. John chapter 14, verse 27. Instead of declaring how bad and hopeless our situation is, we declare your faithfulness. We praise you for the coming victory and breakthrough. We declare it is well with our soul because you are the one who keeps us and the one we trust in wholeheartedly. We declare that no weapon formed against us shall prosper, and every tongue that rises against us in judgment we shall condemn. This is our heritage as servants of the Lord. You have promised to be our shield and our stronghold, and we rest in the assurance that you fight our battles for us. For the Lord your God is the one who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to give you victory. Deuteronomy chapter 20 verse 4 We speak life over every situation that seems dead and declare that your resurrection power is at work in us. Where there is sickness, we speak healing. Where there is despair, we speak hope. Where there is confusion, we speak clarity. For you are not the author of confusion, but of peace. We thank you for the victory that is ours in Christ Jesus. We are more than conquerors through him who loves us. No matter the trials we face, we stand in the confidence that nothing can separate us from your love, not death or life, angels or demons, the present or the future, nor any powers. For I am convinced that neither death nor life neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God 
that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans chapter 8 verses 38 to 39. We praise you, Lord, for your goodness and mercy that follow us all the days of our lives. We declare that your joy is our strength and that we will rejoice in you always, knowing that you are our portion and our salvation. We seal these declarations in the name of Jesus, believing and trusting that you will bring them to pass. Amen.